I get this question a lot, both from clients and from uh, those in our Facebook group, and that is, should I contact the affair partner? And a follow-up to that is usually, should I tell her husband? I do have some thoughts on that, and I would love to share them with you, so stay tuned. All right, so we're just going to dive right into this because it's important um, and it is, a, it is a very personal decision. So I'm going to, I guess, give a cop-out answer <laughs> to start and say that this really depends. I'll give you an example. If the affair partner is someone you have or had a relationship with, and that means maybe she was your really good friend or she was a relative, for instance, then you may want to, it may be beneficial to your healing because you weren't just hurt by your husband's actions, you would have been hurt by a family member or friend as well. So if your goal is to you know, have that opportunity to express your feelings to someone you had a relationship with and explain to them why you can no longer have a relationship with them if that is your choice, then that would be, I think, a healing conversation and a decent reason to contact the affair partner. Full disclosure, um, the affair partner in my situation, I did not know her and um, I have no desire to know her. So um, I share that with you to share that in my case, I had no desire whatsoever to talk to her. And the reason I hear uh, some, some of the folks who ask this question, they, they just want to get it off their chest. They want that affair partner to understand the damage that she has caused and make sure she knows that, you know, the marriage is continuing and they're doing good now and, and all of this. And I understand the desire to share that information with the affair partner, but in my case, I was pretty confident that the affair partner you know, wanted me to hurt. And if I went and told her how much she hurt, it hurt me, well, I think that may have made her happy. Uh, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, I'm sure she knows. Um, she was hurt by my husband because he chose to stay with me. So she knows some pain. And I don't know that that would have done any good to say, oh, by the way, you really, you know, your actions caused our family a lot of pain. I don't know to what end, because I fe also feel very confident she would not apologize. I think she felt very vindicated in her relationship with my husband. So in my case, none of that would have been beneficial. So I didn't do it. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm saying I didn't. And I'm addressing this because I want to share some things to think about before you make the decision to reach out to her. First, what are your motives? I think there are many of us who would really like her to hurt as much as we do. So sometimes our motive is more revenge and more um, vindictive than anything else. If that's the motive, it will not make you feel better. It may make you feel better in the moment to yell at her and tear her down, but it will not help you long term. Um, same thing for contacting her husband. I, I would suggest you ask the same question of yourself. What is my motive? What do I want to gain from this? Because really, when we're making a choice, we're making a choice because it's what we want to do. So why? Why do you want to do this? Why? What, what would you like to see happen if you do this? What would be the optimal outcome? I mean, really think it through. In the case of contacting her husband, um, I'm not sure that I'm a proponent of that. I'm just going to be completely honest. And I understand. I know a lot of people, oh, I wish I would have known. And I'm so glad, you know, so-and-so's husband contacted me. And I wouldn't have had a clue had he not told me. I'm so glad. So, so therefore, I think it's 
the best thing that you do contact the husband. So that, that could be a train of thought that you may have, and I've heard that before. He deserves to know. I've heard that over and over. I struggle with that because I am making a very big decision on behalf of this person I've never met before. And just because I feel a righteous anger that he has a right to know does not give me a right to be the one to tell him. In reality, his wife needs to tell him that. I know my husband never would have contacted her husband. That just, he, he never would have done that. And I never would have done that. But that's us, okay? I'm not being judgy. Listen, you do what's best for you. I'm addressing this question because I think it's important that we really stop and think it through before we do anything. What is your motive? Why, what outcome are you looking for with this? Then another question maybe to ask is, is there another way to accomplish what you want to accomplish? A lot of times it's just getting something off our chest. We want to be heard and we want her to hear it. But sometimes it's not that we necessarily need her to hear it as much as we need to be heard. Here's an activity I did um, to process through forgiving my husband after the affair. This may be a good exercise for you to try first, and then if it doesn't work, reach out to her. You know, whatever you think is best for you, absolutely. But here's what I did. I actually wrote my husband a really long letter. And in this letter, I spelled out everything that he did to me, how much it hurt me, how devastated I was, how angry. I mean, I just let it all out. It was, I think, if memory serves, it was four and a half written pages. And at the very end of this letter, I wrote, I forgive you and you owe me nothing. Now, I did not give this letter to my husband. I folded it and I put it in an envelope and I sealed the envelope and I put it in a drawer. And when I was ready to forgive, like I really felt like I was there, all by myself, I went in the backyard in a little metal bowl and I burned that letter. I never told my husband about it. I never said, by the way, I forgive you. I never did any of that. I just, that was for me. I needed to get it out of me and somewhere else, and then I burned it, and it is very cathartic, actually. The same concept could easily be used if you are feeling like you need to reach out to the affair partner and you don't know if you should. Write out a letter to her, a really long one. Uh, just pour it out. Be as brutally honest as you can possibly be. Put it in an envelope, seal it up, hide it somewhere, and wait. Just wait for a while. Just sit with it. And then try burning it. And see how you feel after that. See if that's something that you can let go in another way. Here are the things to consider on the other side of the coin here because I know our you know the desire that we have when we want to contact the affair partner usually has something to do with us feeling better and us feeling vindicated and you know good things coming our way but you know it can backfire so consider this and this was my case really we had to put out a cease and desist order against the affair partner in our situation because she just literally would not leave us alone so reaching out to her would have violated that. But even before that, had I contacted her, it would have validated her. Because in her mind, I was a horrible wife and a horrible person. And how, who, who, why would he even want to be married to me? Oh, she called me names. It was terrible. So me contacting her just validates everything she thinks of me. It wasn't going to solve anything. If anything, she would probably really start pursuing my husband because she would think, oh, this, you know, she's terrible and I was right and I'm better than her. And it would have just fed a bad situation. The best thing to do in my case was to leave her be, <laughs> file the cease and desist and move on. So think about ramifications other than what you desire to take place. Is that going to reopen a door for her to connect with your husband? And speaking of our husbands, please, please, please don't do that behind his back. He needs a heads up. 
because if you're dealing with an affair partner that um, may not be, um, what's a great term, may not be stable, then she's going to immediately run to him and he's going to be blindsided. And if your husband does not want you to contact her, please just at least respect what he's asking. Don't do anything rash. Of course, it's always your choice. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying do what he tells you to do. Just keep his wishes into consideration. Really listen to how he feels. He may not want you to do that for many reasons. That has nothing to do with him trying to protect her feelings. Maybe he's afraid for you. Maybe he's afraid he's going to have to start back over with her harassing him again. Just listen to what he has to say and think about it before you make the choice. So those are some things to think about when it comes to uh, connecting with and talking to the affair partner and telling her husband. All right. And that, again, another thing to think about, by the way, with telling her husband, if they are in a marriage and it seems like the marriage is going to keep going, do you want her to be single? Do you want her to be available? <laughs> because it makes it a little easier, right, for them to connect and, and be together if she's not married. So just think it through. All these things I'm throwing out are just possibilities. I'm not convincing you to do it or not to do it just to take the time don't do anything impulsive think it through if you have a counselor or you're working with a coach right now talk to them first really put in the thought with this okay because once it's out there once you've done it it's done and you want to get the response you want and again actually i have had people in the group talk about how happy they were that they had the conversation with the affair partner, that it was actually helping, helping them get through their healing. I'm not saying it's 100% a bad idea. I just want to make sure, especially if we are in a heightened emotional state after we find out about the affair, that we're making wise choices, that we're taking the time to consider what the best next step is. Okay. I hope this has been helpful. If you find it helpful, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a single thing. Plenty of other videos to watch. I invite you to do that for sure. And if you're interested in knowing more about um, coaching, I'm a master certified coach. I'd love to talk to you about that and about what I offer through my coaching program and uh, my personal one-on-one -on -one services. If you are, uh, the very first link underneath this video takes you to a great uh, free informational video I created that's full of all, a lot of great tools and tips. So uh, once you get access to that, it's free. Um, it'll tell you how to connect with me and make an appointment uh, for a free consultation. I am not a pushy salesperson. I don't believe in that. I know I'm not a perfect fit for everyone, but I'd love a chance to talk to you to see if maybe I would be for you. All right, take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.